and you can see that really clearly if I set the emitter mode to fixed average rate. Now although that looks really cool it's definitely not what we need. So there's only one more to choose from so let's run the surface emitter and with the surface emitter item selected again we need to set a source for it and that will be our emitter and then we can preview the simulation and you can see that's exactly what we want. The particles are being emitted from the entire polygon surface and they're all parallel to each other. So let's get those two items into the schematic so we can see how everything's linked up. So I'm just going to shift select them, drag them into the schematic and if I just move these around you can see how the... But in Modo 701 we now have proxy items which allows Modo to reference non-deforming mesh items. So proxies are really useful if certain elements of your scene are really heavy. They allow you to work in OpenGL with low-res geometry and then the high-res detail is dealt with at render time. And what this means is you can create very, very big scenes without the hit of loading all the geometry in initially. They're also useful if you're working in a more collaborative environment. So you can have some people working on certain elements of the scene at the same time as somebody working on bringing the whole scene together. So any changes that are made to elements of the scene will filter through. So as an example, we're going to have one item in this scene, which is a proxy. So let's just take a look at that scene, first of all, just by opening it up normally. So if you go to the HP Tutorial Assets, there's a scene called HP Home Straight. Just open that up. So let's take a look at how I've organized this scene. So I have two mesh items in here, one that contains all the high resolution geometry, which is textured, and another one which contains a low resolution stand-in. Now you don't have to have one object per scene. I could have multiple high resolution objects in here with low resolution equivalents and then Modo could reference it multiple times. It's completely up to you. So let's close that. Go back to our scene. So how do we set it up? Well we go to the item list to add item and go down to procedural and add a proxy item. So I'll just bring back my racetrack. Now with the proxy item selected you see in properties that it's asking for a scene to reference. So click Browse, and I'm going to select that HP Home Straight scene, open that up, and we get it drawn as a bounding box in OpenGL. Now it's also asking for a render item, so if we click Browse, and we need the render item to be the high resolution texture geometry, so from the drop down we'll select Home Straight High, and it's also asking for a preview item, so hit Browse, and this time we'll select Home Straight Low. And you can see in OpenGL it's drawing that low resolution geometry that we defined in the scene. So you can see in OpenGL that a ribbon is drawn which follows the path that that object is taking. Now because there's only two keyframes it, the path is going to be linear. So what we need to do is add another keyframe between them. So I'm going to frame 24, I'm going to hit the Y key, bring up the transform tool and then I'm just going to adjust that locator and you can now see that arc in OpenGL. So I'll just use the time tool to sort of scrub through that and you can see the path that that foot is taking and that's looking pretty good, it's not crossing through the geometry too much. Might need to tweak it a little bit more but you can see how that visible motion path is really helping. Another good example where a visible motion path is useful is on the foot that gets thrown over the bike. You can see there that the curve needs to be much more sweeping. So I'm just going to scrub between those two poses and just change the position of this foot. So I've added a couple of keyframes on either side. You can see we get a much more sweeping curve now. And with the time tool active, if I hold down my middle mouse button and play that through. Now the time tool also has some other options which are useful. If I click on that button and then hold down my middle mouse button, the animation will ping pong back and forth. If I hold down control and hit my middle mouse button, the selected item will jump to the previous keyframe. And if I click on the cog and activate that checkbox, I can then use my scroll wheel on my mouse to cycle through the keyframes.